Hello and welcome back to another how to with me Jurassics. I hope you're well and doing good. Today we're talking about mushrooms because I got a few comments on my greenhouse interior. I put a card up in the corner so that you can have a look at that episode. Uh, I had a couple of questions about how I did my mushrooms because I don't use these ones behind me, not in not in my builds, no. Uh, these are, are naturally generated or uh, bone milled mushrooms. So what I want to talk about is how do we make some really nice mushrooms and I'll show you some really good ones towards the end of the episode. So mushrooms, we have the two that I have in my hand and then we have the large variety behind us. But where can we find them? Your two best opportunities for finding mushrooms are in a dark oak forest or a swamp biome. So in the dark oak forest, you'll find majority of these large mushrooms, which can be harvested using a non silk touch tool. Uh, that will get you the mushrooms. If you use silk touch, you'll get the actual blocks uh, of the mushroom. And in the swamp, you'll always find a mushroom in the witch's hut, which is just here. So there'll be one in a uh, pot on the windowsill. And you'll also find uh, mushrooms dotted about the swamp biome. The more time you spend in there, the, the more you'll get because they do grow. Uh, I thought I saw one here. Uh, there's one. So you'll see, you know, a, a spattering uh, of mushrooms around the biome. Um, but I would definitely say either the swamp or the dark oak biome will be your best option, uh, just because there's more of those sort of biomes in the game. You can also find mushrooms in a Tyaga biome. Um, this will also give you the opportunity to collect uh, podsole using a silk touch shovel. Uh, I also like to use it to grab some ferns as well. So uh, a couple of good reasons, but obviously not the easiest biome to find. You can also get mushrooms at a mushroom island. So you have the brown mushrooms on the ground. What you can also do is shear a mushroom cow to get the red mushrooms or chop down the red and brown large mushrooms with a uh, axe or anything really uh, that doesn't have silk touch on it. You can also get mycelium, uh, which is a, uh, another very useful block, which we will go into in just a moment. The other thing you can do is get a trident with channeling and if it's raining, throw it at a cow and or a mushroom and that will change it into a brown mushroom cow uh, and you can shear it in the same way. Uh, so that's the mushroom island. The last and maybe less obvious place to look for mushrooms is in the nether, uh, but you'll find a, a lot of mushrooms in, in here. So uh, don't be afraid if you just need some to, to pop in and grab some uh, mushrooms uh, that will change slightly with the 1.16 update which is coming out shortly um, but I'm sure we'll still be able to find them uh, sporadically placed within the nether and your other last option is in a woodland mansion but if you haven't found mushrooms by then you haven't been looking hard enough so that you if you if you really want to you can go find some in a woodland mansion. If you're enjoying this video so far, please like, subscribe, and comment uh, down below. It is greatly appreciated and will really help me out at this stage of my Minecraft YouTube career. Well, back to the rest of the video. So to plant your mushrooms, you will need to be in a light level of 12 or below. So if you try and, and place the mushrooms here uh, where, where the sun is, you can't place them. Whereas if you place them under something, uh, they will go in as long as the light level is below 12. 
Uh, you can then remove this roof uh, and then bone mill them. As long as these blocks around here don't get updated, then they'll quite simply, quite happily uh, sit in the light. The other option is to get yourself some podzol or mycelium, and then they will be quite happy uh, to be planted in any light level. Uh, mycelium obviously only get in on the mushroom islands, uh, but you can find the podzol in the Tiagas. Um, but there is an easier way to get hold of these, which I will show you just now. So if you've ever been to a Tiaga, you'll see that there is plenty of podzol around the large variety of spruces. So if you, if you plant them in a two by two formation and then get some bone milk, what will happen is the ground will be turned into podzol itself. So there we go. And what you can do is harvest that, replace it with dirt or grass or whatever, and regrow the tree. And that is a very quick way of getting podzol, uh, which can be used to grow the mushrooms or, or as decoration. Uh, I really like this block. It's a, a great block to show a bit more life and vegetation within a, a design. So once you've got your podzol, you can place it in the ground with a, a mushroom on top. So just sort of space these out. And then if you bone mill, you'll get the large variety of uh, mushroom. So, so once you've grown your mushrooms, you can harvest them for additional uh, mushrooms. So if we take the axe to it you'll find that we'll get uh, some mushrooms not not crazy amounts but we'll definitely get some uh, so there we go we've got up well, 23 and we've still got a bit to go there and if we do it on this we'll get the brown varieties so um, if you plant one you'll you'll get a good amount to then uh, upgrade into the large uh, mushrooms what you can also do is silk touch. Uh, I need some building blocks now, because uh, we're in survival, so if I just do that, there we go. And if I silk touch this, we will get the building blocks of mushrooms. So we'll get the uh, brown mushroom block, the mushroom stem. And if we do this one, we will get the red mushroom block as well. There we go. And fantastic it just started to rain okay so now we've cleared the weather we can look at the mushroom blocks so uh, it's done a couple of towers of them and what we can see from using them is that if we put another block and then take it away we get this internal structure from where the other uh, red mushroom block was there but it hasn't changed the stem same here yeah it's it's changed the mushroom stem block because we took it away we've got this internal structure and same again on the brown so this gives us another option and i really like i think especially the brown mushroom block and the mushroom stem are very underrated blocks uh, they've got or the mushroom blocks got a very good texture i've used it as a, a wool or, or actually i've used both of these as a wool in the interior of one of my builds um so these you know it, it will do it on all sides so if we go all the way around this and then take them away it gives this other uh, internal texture and that can be used really well and effectively with builds so let's go and take a look at some of the builds we've got these two mushroom designs are from my greenhouse interior so uh, I kind of based this one off of oyster mushrooms uh, so if you've ever seen them they've, they've kind of got a, a longish sort of stem uh, with a flat cap so this one's sort of leaning on a diagonal uh, these are more sort of capped if you'd like and I really like the idea of growing it out of a trunk or you know the, the mushroom has taken over and uh, has started to break down the tree and is then using the nutrients to grow out of it it gives some realism to the design and the, the build 
even though these mushrooms are, are huge, uh, it still makes sense. Uh, I've mixed in some of the uh, mycelium, the podso, uh, coarse dirt, uh, and a mixture of mushrooms just to sort of break up this and give it a bit of life itself. We've also got a cobweb in there as well. Sometimes, you know, spiders do like to make their homes in mushrooms. Um, but I, I really thought this this came together really well, and it's just a, got a really good look about it. Um, and it sort of makes use of the uh, brown block, uh, brown mushrooms, rather than these sort of stool tall capped mushrooms. And then we've got this one, which is it's kind of like a, a pointy red mushroom. I guess it's probably poisonous, but who knows? Uh, use the end rods to do sort of these these mushrooms that are growing. Uh, haven't quite reached the size of this, um, so they're sort of going through their their growth uh, cycle. And then on the internal of this one, I, I sort of placed these blocks and took them away so we got this internal structure so can do that but I thought felt this was sort of coming too far down so uh, wanted to keep this block here and this block here red so it's it's only sort of the real inner part of it which is the delicate which is uh, sort of open to to other things um, and so sort of made this quite steep um, maybe Maybe could add a bit more there, maybe one more there, one there, um, just to give it a, a bit of a, a shape. So I, I've typically gone with quite long um, block pattern, um, but this gives it a really nice shape and it looks quite pointy, quite interesting uh, as, or for the eyes. Uh, on this one, I just went with Podsob. I, I didn't mix any mycelium or, or coarse dirt. And again, that gives a bit of variety for the mushrooms. One thing I forgot to mention is you could put sort of vines on on the um, oak or the logs to make it look like it's um, being sort of overgrown even more and breaking down. So I put together a few more ideas of what you could do with mushrooms. So. Uh, with this one, um, if you're unfamiliar with mushrooms, this my inspiration for this was uh, enoki mushrooms. So they've got a very thin stem with a very small sort of cap. I guess what we could do is potentially use that like that. And then when we put that, you've got that kind of internal structure. So it gives it uh, a different uh, texture. Um, so it has that kind of image in your mind um, put put some more brown mushrooms to sort of show that they're growing or, or this is quite a, a compact but quite thin spindly mushrooms but behind it we we've gone with something maybe maybe you could say a bit more fantastical um, so on the top here we have light blue terracotta um, we've again used this technique with using the internal mushroom structure and then we've got mushroom blocks, but that's actually been mixed in with some uh, smooth quartz. Um, it does sort of blend in because there's this sort of wavy pattern on both of the blocks. It gives a really good sort of blend. It's not too sharp, whereas if you had a pure white stair, it would stand out quite a bit. And with the, the mushroom top, I've tried to sort of give it uh, sort of a dome but not too pointy but not too flat like the one behind it and we've also sort of used uh, a lighting technique with the end rods sticking down uh, again we've got the cobwebs in there um, and it just gives you a, a sort of a different look and obviously you can change the terracotta to a number of different other terracottas or concrete or something like that and then moving on to this, this was sort of trying to trying to give an idea of you know how how we can sort of use uh, a multi-stem uh, mushroom idea. Um, so maybe just sort of trying to trying to play around with this as as we're talking. 
um, just to sort of show it, it's not necessarily a, uh, a fixed idea. Um, it can change quite a bit. So there we go. Maybe that's made that stem a bit too thick. Maybe that's better or, or maybe just leaving it like that. And there's sort of nothing else that, or there's no space internally. We're using every, every space that we can to put blocks in and making them a bit tall. I think this, this is quite a nice one to sort of show. Uh, you could do the same with that one, have another one branching off on the back. And it just gives a bit more sort of life to the mushrooms. This one was sort of a, a brown cap mushroom, but I thought this could be a good entrance to, to a home. Uh, so you, you could have this as an entrance down to your mines or, or something like that and to create a, sort of a use for the mushroom. Also on top, so we've got here, we've got the brown terracotta, we've got the brown concrete and concrete powder just to add a bit of texture. So maybe this is the older growth of the mushroom and then you've got the younger bit sort of coming up and blossoming out the top. And then underneath we've trimmed it with a bit of wood. So I went with spruce, maybe you could use dark oak or oak uh, to trim it if you wanted it to look even darker. Um, for me, I think I really like this because it gives a bit more contrast. And then inside I've actually used just plain terracotta um, to give some life within uh, the inside of the mushroom. And then right at the top here is the only sort of bit we've used on the cap. That's the brown mushroom is this sort of internal bit. And then to, ooh, <laughs> to, to make it a bit more of a fantastical, uh, we've got these glow globes, uh, glow globes, <laughs> glow, glowstone hanging down. Uh, yeah, maybe these are some of the, uh, sort of uh, growths that sort of come down and give this uh, a bit more of a fantastical build and with this one I've just stuck with the mushroom stem block I think it's a really nice block and you know you could mix it up uh, another thing I was just thinking about is maybe maybe we put some uh, like green growth growing on it so coming up the uh, the mushroom you know, we can wrap it round that sort of thing and it will just give it uh, a bit more of a, a life so if you are in a forest you know, add some stuff to it again we could use the vine something like that and that will just give it a much better uh, sort of integration into potentially any build that you have this one <laughs> is a bit of a, a trial I guess it's probably a bit yellow so if you could change the uh, texture to it but what I was thinking here I think it's called a, a puffball mushroom and they're just sort of round bulbous type mushrooms so use the the dry sponge on this um, again you know if you've got a, a huge tree um, you could maybe put this on the side sort of growing out of it but that was just a quite a, a simple quick thought and then this one is sort of a, a def cap. Um, so on the top, we've used the red concrete and the white concrete. Um, it's quite in your face, if I'm honest. Um, but down here, we've used uh, quartz slabs just to give that ring around the bottom. And then internally, we've used glowstones again, uh, but I've hidden them or, or sort of covered them slightly with uh, red glass oh, just smash that one out um, so you still get the light level I guess you could, could maybe do that add in a lot of depth but I don't think it changes it too much and then here we've got the stem again a lot of the sort of builds I, I sort of put in a basic sort of circular so on this one we started off with a, a a minecraft circle a circle as you can get and sort of tapered it up built the cap again started with a circle and then just added to it as i was going around or took away sort of uh, a bit like a uh, 
carving granite or marble or something like that you're you're sort of shaving away at the blocks it does mean that you are placing more blocks and you know especially with the mushroom blocks where they connect it can be a bit of a pain but i think you know the end result can be fantastic you know my my favorites i really do like this one i think it's a great one for for a house this one you know have a, a forest full of uh, giant trees and these magical mushrooms uh, with these sort of small areas of these other mushrooms is fantastic. Uh, I genuinely believe that mushroom blocks are underrated and you can do so much with them. Uh, great for internal walls because they have these textures. It's not just a, a plain uh, block uh, maybe a bit like the uh, concrete uh, over on the on the death cat mushroom um, it just gives some variety and that is it for this episode of how to I uh, hope you had a good time and you enjoyed learning a bit more about the mushroom block and its various uses for me I love it I keep saying it, but I really do think it is a underrated block. I hope you will come and check out my world, Jurassic's World. There'll be a link at the end of the video. And if you like this, please like, subscribe, comment for more videos from me. But that's it for today. See you soon.